Namaste, Moji. Namaste. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. My question was, is uh, everything predetermined? And how can is you everything know? predetermined? Yeah, is everything predetermined? Yeah, like what you mean? Everything as in what? Uh, I remember reading from uh, Ramana Maharashi yeah. about everything, exactly everything. Yes. Even me doing this now? Yes, yes. To you? Yes, yes. But then I also remember hearing Sadhguru saying that nothing is predetermined. <laughs> so, yes, yes. You, when, you, you are, when you are really free, you can say anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> because actually, uh, there are no absolute statements you can make. Yeah in the kingdom of the relative, we can say. But they have a certain way and very often a uh, master may seemingly contradict themselves all the time. But it's not a contradiction. This is the thing. It's not a contradiction. It's just somehow something is relevant in everything, in every moment, speaking. It, tremendous flexibility. Hmm? Only the psychological mind has this rigidity. But uh, as you come more and more into your natural state, you're infinitely flexible. <laughs> what he's really saying is everything uh, is, uh, uh, is everything predetermined. One says, is everything predetermined? Yes, everything is predetermined. Another says, no, nothing is predetermined. Yeah, 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 okay. as you like, as you like. <laughs> because they know that it's totally irrelevant, this kind of talk. It's predetermined. Uh, uh, Yes, wonderful. Yeah, I get that. You get it? Yeah, I oh, totally get it. It's, <laughs> it's freedom, so it's the same as saying that whatever is said about self-inquiry will be absolutely not true. Say again? Whatever is said about self-inquiry yes. is absolutely not true. Mm. It's more self-inquiry is a tool yeah. for exposing the untrue okay. and yeah. unveiling what is uh, true. But the true is not uh, something phenomenal, it's not something phenomenal, it's not something objective, it's not an object, it reveals that. Yeah. So I don't know if this is what you mean when you say something like that. Uh, it's a very powerful, the most unsparing tool. Yeah. Uh, is uh, the observer uh, the same as the I am state? Is the observer the same as the I am state? The observer itself is observed within the I am. Yeah. So the observer then is only a dream. I have to check you out a bit more. <laughs> Depends where you're coming from to say that. If okay. you say it like this, or like a sort of like a giveaway statement, because no. I may say one minute I agree with you, another moment I say no, 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 no. What you're speaking is rubbish. You see? Yeah. Okay. So. I cannot give this kind of uh, hypothetical answers to things that seem like, oh yes, there's no such thing as that. Sometimes I may speak like this, yeah. when we're in a space like this together, and I can feel the waves of uh, energetically, I can speak different ways. And perhaps, uh, you know, I've said, don't make tattoos out of any utterance or any mm. teaching. No? Yeah. Follow them and get the gist of what they are pointing, because they are pointing to something that is not an object. You see? Uh, so, don't go so much for these kind of questions which seem like they have an answer, and you get an answer, and you go away with an answer. Yeah. Um, but more that you explore into something, and then find that your position that you had before may be lost completely, and uh, you maybe feel scattered for a little bit, but something really comes back into a, a, a much clearer space like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's this experience here arising, mm -hmm. and it's like a vibration really strong. And it's like I'm being pulled out of my body, mm -hmm. and I get very, very dizzy in the same time, like I'm going to faint. Yeah. And then it feels like death is arising. Yeah. But then there's some resistance arising, and then yeah. I'm back in the body, so to yeah. speak. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm. It feels very powerful and uh, scary at the same time. Yeah. You continue to follow the 
inquiry, as I, as I put it, and then this will change the way in which this experience will be experienced, yeah. like that. Um, you, you may find that uh, you are still very, very present throughout, even the sense of an out-of-body experience, because yeah. the self is not an in-body or out-of-body experience. It's not, uh, you see? It's non-local, yeah. Yeah. It can. It, it's also local. Also. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Here, nowhere, and everywhere. You like this type of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you. It's, this is awesome. Thank you <laughs> for having me here. Okay. Me. Yeah. yeah. No, but it it, re it really hits home what yeah. you're saying, That's and right. beyond the words even. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I would like to somehow. Uh, see if we can raise somehow that place without such strenuous effort or something to come to the place totally beyond the concepts not difficult not difficult not difficult and worth every moment and then uh, you can see then we are freed up from that uh, conceptual realm because it caused so much trouble and the main glue to the conceptual realm is this unqualified I feeling. Because if you want to find out anything at all in this realm, I would say find out what the I is. Find out what it can be and find out if it has a solid, a solidity about it. Uh, you may not understand this in the beginning, but this I sense is the most potent measure of all conceptual uh, experiences. To find out what the I is. Because God says, I am. But the devil also says, I am. And the beings say, I am. So, are they all the same? I am. All of us have the sense, I. That must be there first, before any other thought can come. Before even the feeling of other, before the feeling of husband or wife or children or family or country or religion or even God, the feeling, I, must be there. It is the firstborn. Only when the I thought or the I concept arise, subsequent to that other concepts can arise. So the I is that position whereby all things else are perceived. You see? So everything is else to the I. Yeah. Find out if there is something in which the I itself is else. I am very open for this investigation any time you want. Hmm? Most efforts is to create some shift of perspective from the person to the state of presence. Most spiritual effort, sadhana, practice, exercises, is to move out of the limited range or realm of personhood into the state of presence. State of presence is synonymous with the sense I am. That natural intuition inside here. It is consciousness itself that is announcing itself in the body as the sense I am. The sense I am has been referred to as the godly principle inside the body. Research it. If you know what the I am, is it fixed or is it shape-shifting? Is it constant or is it varying? You must find out. When you find out, uh, many, many things unexpected will be found out instantly. Hmm? It's 
pointless to study everything in life and yet not know the one who is studying who it is. That which knows knowledge and ignorance. That knower, can that knower itself be known? Now these may seem to be mighty riddles or something, but they are very, very the answer to them, if you want to call an answer or a revelation, huh, is right here. So I am not inclined to give any pointers that is going to multiply concepts, but more to dry them up first. When they are dried up, we will still use them, like you use dried fruits. You will still use them, but their power uh, will be in the right, in the right proportion to you, who you are. Some of these things may not be clear at the moment, so I totally encourage you to follow through as we are speaking. Don't rely upon merely the logical mind. There are greater powers available to you. You don't need to know about them ahead of time. They reveal themselves according to the, the possibilities presented to you. And here in Satsang, the highest possibilities are presented to you. To go beyond the limited, the limited field of personhood, to come first into the state of pure presence, unmixed presence. When the sense I am sheds all of its association, or you can say when it stays by itself without linking up or connecting with any concept. That is pure meditation, in fact. Hmm? You can watch. And then what I am speaking with you will become spontaneously understood. And I am always driving to this point, if I can. And not to waste time on useless conceptualizing but to make use of concepts, to go beyond concepts. And it is not difficult. It is not difficult. Hmm? Why? Because your essential nature is already beyond all of this. So I don't want to put the barrier of time before you, to say, oh, you need a lot of time. It may take time. Strange as it seemed that it takes time to realize the timeless, but my news is always good. <laughs> uh, because the most beautiful discovery is already in place. You are not here to create any state but to discover the stateless state, the state wherein all other states, all other states come and go, but itself does not come and go. Thank you. I am absolutely convinced, uh, and uh, I am. And uh, that, yeah, it's been now uh, for many days. This uh, I heard your videos many times, but yes, this one when you talked about convincing myself over and over, it really hit home because since then it's been, I don't know, stillness, emptiness, void, yeah. and yeah, abide as that yeah. rather than in it and just. Yes, initially we say abide as that. Why do I say? Stay as that, abide as that, when you are already that. Why to say stay as that? I'll tell you why. Because the habit, the reflex, is to go back to identity, personal identity. So for a while, it is addressed really to the attention. Stay here for a while. It's not always the same advice. 
Sometimes I don't use this advice. Hmm? But if I say, stay as this, there's an intuitive response inside that says, okay, yeah, leave everything else. When you leave everything else, you find after a while you don't have to stay. You simply are. Just like if I say to you, whatever you do, stay as a man. It will say, I'm not staying as a man now. I am. Isn't it? So the conviction that your consciousness must be at least as natural as you uh, knowing that you are, you are a man, for instance. And it's more true as well. You see? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very good, very good, very good. Okay. If you find that somehow mind goes spinning for a bit, it's okay. Don't try and figure out anything. No. There is a space in the centre of all of that that is just untouched. And even if it is only the size of a pinhead in you, Be in that. It will expand. Don't feel that somehow, if something feels stirred up, that means something is wrong. No, it means something is very right. Hmm? Don't waste energy putting out small fires. Stay in that kind of neutrality. There's a neutralness in you. Move in that. There's nothing to figure out right now. Hmm? Leave it to the activity of grace. Don't worry. And trust in that which brought you here. Because the psychological conditioning yeah, and identity naturally fights against this to sabotage the it will feel like this <clears throat> the opportunity to to recognize and be the freedom that you are. Don't be frightened by your mind, if it plays like that, because it's not always the case. And hold this idea, this sense, I am here only for this. Don't come here to learn, but to discover. Don't look for freedom in instalments. There's a wholeness. Don't go for little things. nor to even try and evaluate any kind of progress. Forget about all of these things. No. Yes. Something is taking care of you. I trust that. Hmm. OK. Such joy to see you. Huh? OK.
dream.